Hello, I'm Daniela. I'm excited to introduce this workshop to you. It's a five-part slow stitching workshop in order to create this beautiful slow stitched barn owl. Now the thing that makes this barn owl unique is that all the stitches are a single stitch, the simple straight stitch. So this is a great project for beginners. Now, of course, you're welcome to tailor this to your own needs. So if you'd like to introduce additional stitches or colors, feel free to do that. But this is a great beginner project. It's a long project. It took me about 10 hours to complete, but I think you'll find that it's really worth it. I have a template that you can download. You can just go to my website, daniellamellon.com. It's really a paper pattern that you can print out, cut out, and then trace onto your fabric. I also show you how to do this later on in the chapter, as well as showing you how to make a freehand sketch, because it's really just simple shapes to make your barn owl. I'll talk about the materials that we use in this project, and then we'll stitch on the eyes, the face, and the beak. And then we'll come back when I upload my next class on Wednesday for the second part in this workshop. So let's get started with the first part. So to start our barn owl, just gather your supplies. Now I chose fabric that I'm gonna use for the base of the face. I have my embroidery floss and the colors are listed here just in general terms. You want like a beige and an off-white, a medium brown, a darker brown. But there are a couple of key colors to consider. You can download your template first and that has the entire list of supplies as well as the pattern. We'll talk more about that later. But to start with gathering your supplies, I have a piece of quilt here, and this is gonna be the back of my piece that I slow stitch. I purposely cut it larger than I'll need because I wanna be able to trim around it to use this as um, either a page in a fabric journal or a pillow, the center of the pillow. Now, I like to start by gathering my fabrics first. So I chose just a dark swatch of scrap fabric here for the eyes, and so I just have the charcoal fabric. And then I have a neutral, very light color for the beak. And again, I don't need very much fabric for that. But what I do need fabric for is the background of the face. Now I suggest you just choose a neutral. It can be something as simple as just a plain piece of beige fabric, or it can have a print. The stitched bird will look a little abstract anyway, so a print will add a little interest. This is text. Here I have a map. And here I have some upholstery fabric with just kind of a neutral pattern. I think I'm going to use this map fabric because I like the way that looks. I like the particulars of this print. So to start with, I wanna cut out the base of my head, the background of my head. Now, since I chose this fabric to use for the background of my head, I can cut out the template so that I have an actual pattern to follow. And here, I've cut out my template, and I've cut out the beak and the eyes as well. And this way, I have a little guide for sketching my work to help me piece it together. You can also freehand this because it's a fairly simple design. So I'm gonna freehand it just to show you my process. So to use the template, just select where on the fabric you want your face to go. If you wanted to get the different symbols, you just play around with it. Since I'm gonna sketch it, I'm just gonna sketch right onto the fabric and I'm using a Frixian Pilot pen here. It's erasable with heat. So in the end, when I'm done, I can just take an iron and it'll erase all my marks. Now the first thing I wanna do is cut the fabric for the face. And I really just want the inside here. I could also just go around this if I was using my template just to trace it. But just to freehand it, it's a simple, fairly simple shape. It's kind of just heart shaped. So I'll just choose the size I want. I like to just do half first. And it comes to somewhat of a point at the bottom. From there, I just fold my fabric in half and I can just cut it out. And this is helpful so I can choose the exact size barn owl that I want to create. So I have my fabric piece here. It's very heart shaped, so I'll just trim it down a little bit just to make it a little more rounded. 
Again, I keep it right in that folded formation. And I like that a lot better. So I know I'm going to put this right here, kind of in the center of my square. And now I'm going to pin it down. So I'll use my pin cushion just to pin it down. So now I need to tack down this face, this backing. So what I'm going to do is just take color embroidery floss that kind of will blend right in. In this case, I have this light beige that I've wrapped around this little spool. And I'm just going to tack a stitch all the way around. But before I do that, I just want to gather the supplies for the rest of my features. So I want to make the eyes with this black scrap and the nose with this very plain muslin scrap. So again, I take my pen and I'll create those shapes. Now, on the template, the eyes are pretty large, particularly for small size face. So I have a lot of leeway with that. I'm just going to sketch the eye, making it a little larger than I think I'll need because I can always trim it down. So I make that eye nice and rounded, just a circle. And if I wasn't designing it myself, I would just use the template. I'll fold my fabric in half just so I can cut both eyes at the same time. And then I'll just cut out the eye. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly round. There will be a little bit of handmadeness to this bird, but it's also kind of interesting when it's not perfect. So I'm not going to really go out of my way to make it not perfect. I just know that I'm very good at that. So I'll just do it that way. So I have my eyes and I can play around with the position as well as the size of the eyes. I happen to like that size very much, but if I wanted to trim it down, I could do that. I'm not going to pin it into place yet. I just want to work on my beak. And once again, I look for the beak and it's about the same height as the eye, maybe one and a half times as long. So I'll just make half the beak and it's two triangles, a triangle up top and a triangle on the bottom. And I just connect the two. Now I also know that I want to make this a little bit longer. So I'll drag it out further and I want to round those edges somewhat. So I don't want it to just be straight lines. So here I have half of my beak, got a somewhat of a rounded edge. And now I'll take my scissors, fold my fabric in half and cut that beak. And I have that beak and I can flip it to see exactly the position I want. And I kind of like this going up top here, but I'm going to trim that down. So I'm just going to round that top. And there I have my beak. I want to hide some of that beak, the top of that beak, the where it appears with stitches. So I'm really pleased with the way that looks. So right now I'm going to set aside my eyes and my nose, and I just want to tack down this face. So I'm going to take my thread, which I've already threaded onto my needle, and just using a small stitch, I'm just going to stitch around. These stitches aren't going to show terribly, because we're going to actually start embellishing it with stitches very soon, after we get our fabric pieces tacked down. So every half inch or so, I'll just make a stitch, just a straight stitch. So I just stab from underneath, pull my needle through and just stab maybe a quarter of an inch from where I came in. And I'm just going to go all the way around the perimeter of this shape. And I'll take my time and I can do this almost anywhere. I can do this in front of the television. I can do this in the car waiting for somebody to come out of an appointment. I can even bring it into an appointment while I'm waiting in the waiting room to go in. It's just small little stitches. And my purpose is just to tack down this piece. So 
So I'll continue to go around and I'll show you the results when it's done. So I've completed the stitches all the way around. Some are larger than others. I can remove my pin and now I can start placing my eyes and my nose. I'm going to take an iron though and remove that orange mark just because I find it a little distracting. So I just take my hot iron and just press it down right over where that mark was and it removes it. So now I'm ready to work on the placement of the eyes and the nose there, the beak. So I'm just going to take the eyes here and because they're not perfectly round they have a flat side and I like the way that looks right on the center here. I'll cover it up with stitches and then I can take that nose and just put it down and I can figure out the placement. Typically there's a little more distance between the nose and the eyes but for the stitching since it's not a real bird I think it'll be just fine. I am going to take my hot iron while I have it and just go over that nose just to remove that color just so it's not distracting and this will help me when I make my stitches. So now I want to tack down these pieces. I'm going to take a pin and put it right in the nose to hold it into place and I'll have to adjust this a little bit further later. I just want to work on the eyes here so once I have them where I want them I'll take another pin, hold this one in place, and the same thing over here. Be careful when I put it down. There, I just moved it again. Take another look, and now I'll take my thread and I just want to tack it down. Again, I'm just going to go around the perimeter of the eye. I'll start with this one here. Again, making that same little stitch. I stab up near the edge. I don't have to go right to the edge. If I go too close to the edge, that fabric will fray. And I'll just go around in spots, tacking it down. I'm going to really try and keep these stitches fairly tiny on the eye here because I don't want to really distract. And I don't want to have too many lines that are um, very long on the eye. So I'll just put a few little stitches. I like to go all the way around the eye and that really secures it. And when I'm mostly done, I can remove that pin. And that gives me an idea of how it's looking. Now this fabric is mostly black. It's not solid. It's got some areas of lighter color, as you can see, but it's very effective for the eye. So now I'll just continue over here on that second eye. And again, I don't want to pull my thread too taut. And I'll make my little tiny stitches around that eye. Now we are going to stitch a highlight in the eye eventually, but for now my goal is just to tack down the main features on this face. So the eyes, the nose, and we've already tacked down that background fabric. That gives us the basis for our owl and it's really starting to come alive already. And this is where it gets a little quirky by depending on what techniques you use, what colors you choose, if anything is off kilter, it starts to look a little wonky, which is not a bad thing. It kind of gives it a little bit of character. So it's really about playing with it. Now I'm using standard colors here, the dark for the eyes and the beige for the rest of the face, but you can change that if you'd like. Right now I just want to tack down that beak. So I'm going to remove my pin just so I have the placement where I want it. So that looks pretty good. I'll hold it down with my finger and just on the bottom here I'm going to start little stitches to tack it down. I'll continue. I want my stitches to go in the direction of the beak 
and the perimeter. So my stitches on the right are going to be at an angle going down to the base. And then when I come over here on the left hand side, my stitches will be going up at a similar angle, just mimicking the perimeter. They don't have to be perfect. Right now we're just tacking it down. We'll be doing a lot of stitching later, which is where we'll start adding our decorative skills and the bird's personality will really come to life. And these pieces that we're tacking down don't require a lot of stitching. We're trying to hold them down in place, but we'll be adding a lot more stitching later. Right now we're trying to secure it and prevent the ends from really rolling up. And if we achieve that, then we're in good standing. So I'll knot the back of my thread here since we're done with this. And now what I would like to do is just create that outline of that bird. Now it's very simple. It's a very rounded shape up top. And you can decide the amount of space you want between the face and the edge here. I like to just do a little bit. I kind of do a little bit on one side and I try and match it somewhat on the other. And then I come around and we saw how easily that this marker is removed with heat. So I can really play it around with it. If I don't have the exact shape I like at first, I can come back in and change it. So we're almost done for today. The next thing I want to do though is really work on creating that border. Barn owls have a very interesting little face and they have what looks like a mask because the way the feather is and the coloring frames this little heart. So now the last stitching that I want to do today is to create that frame right around that face, that heart shape. And so I'm choosing my golden beige thread. I really like that color. And we're just going to make straight stitches. And these stitches are going to transition from the head to that face. So I'm going to make little stitches that connect those two pieces of fabric. Now the fabric has a raw edge, so we don't want to go too close to the edge and make it fray further. So I have my thread. It's knotted on my fabric. I'm going to start at the bottom here. And I like to come just outside that face and make a straight stitch and I go down just maybe a quarter of an inch into that face, that heart shaped fabric. Then I'll skip a little space and I'll come up and do the same size stitch. So now I have two stitches. I'm going to continue all the way around the face making these stitches where it connects the background with the face, but I don't want to space them evenly. Some will be closer together and some will be spaced. Now we'll go around again, another round in the next session, just to tidy it up and to start filling it out. But for now, I'm trying just to make a cohesive border. And I choose this color because it's slightly darker than the beige that we used. It introduces a little bit of warmth and we're starting to actually develop the characteristics that make the barn owl pretty special. So I'm coming around here, making just those straight stitches and it's also creating that border. We will eventually introduce additional colors into the border. So that's why I'm not worried about getting all the stitches done or even having them done in an orderly fashion. My goal is to have the majority of the stitches that surround this face done with this beautiful golden beige and then we'll switch over and add some highlights and some lowlights. And that helps with the camouflage for the barn owl because it's not just a solid line of color. There are some um, shadows and some lighter colors. So I'm just going around, continuing to make these little stitches.
The key is to make the stitches, most of them the same proximate size. So take your time and really enjoy this process. You want these stitches to look very random. So some will be very close together and others will be spaced apart. And as I mentioned, we'll go back in and fill it in with additional colors and additional stitches, even of this stitch. So I'll knot off this thread. I'll re-thread my needle and finish going all the way around with just this one color. And then in part two of the workshop, we'll start adding more details, building up the outside of the barn owl. So that's where I'm gonna to stop today. Feel free to review this workshop again if you wanna just really fine tune any particular part that we went over. And next time we'll start on adding some details and really developing our barn owl. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. See you Wednesday.